I hope you've had a chance to watch my video on Rust Desk and how you can use it as a remote desktop solution inside of your home office or inside of a business over the LAN. In this video, it's a follow-up video, I want to talk about how you can access your desktop when you are away from your home, home office or from your business and access your desktop back at base over the internet. It's a different type of setup and it's one of the different variations that I talked about in this first video. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive into this. So this is what I covered in the last video. Rust Desk allows you to connect to a remote server, one machine connecting to another. You can do it over the local network and here you can see that this gray screen is meant to be this gray screen here. So you're accessing this computer from this one. I also talked about how you can do it over the internet. So you can achieve the same thing, not in the same, in the on the same LAN, but actually across the internet, across the cloud to get that to happen. And I said that there were three ways. And this first way is what I covered in the previous video. And then that's where you're just doing it all over the local area network. I said there's a second way, and this is what I'm covering in this video. And that is that most, of course, local area networks in your home, in your office, you've got a firewall. So if you're outside of that on the Internet, how do you get through that firewall? And the way you can do it that I'm showing today is by using a Rust desk server that's also in the cloud. And so uh, what happens is these machines that you want to have accessed they talk to the Rust desk server through the firewall because outbound connections are allowed. And then when you want to connect to it, it kind of piggybacks uh, the signal on the back of the return of these signals so that ultimately you get connection through to those machines. And that's because this Rust desk server is out on the internet. Now, there is a third way where you can punch a hole in your firewall, which is to open up some ports, forward them to different places. I said I'm not going to cover that approach because I think this punching of the hole is different on just about every piece of firewall equipment and also it does have some security risks attached to it. And in that case you'd have a Rust desk server running on the LAN and you would kind of go through this hole and talk to the Rust desk server and then it would talk to the clients. However, there is an alternative and that is using tail scale, which is a way of having a VPN not out to a VPN connection, you know, so you can connect to a VPN somewhere else, but the inverse, you're connecting to a VPN uh, back into your network. Now, if you'd like a video on that, that a third approach, kind of a 3A in our setup here, do let me know because that one is maybe uh, more easy to demonstrate. Now, it's just worth mentioning at this point that when you first install Rust Desk, it is actually set up to use Rust Desk's public servers. So you can actually achieve this same thing, connect from outside to inside on your local area using Rust Desk's public servers. Now, the, they don't like really people doing that. They set it up so that you can see how it works. They want you, prefer for you to set up your own server, which is what we're going to do. And part of the downside is, is that it's slow because this is a public server that who knows how many thousands and thousands of people are using. There's no guarantee it's going to be running. So at that moment when you really need to connect that's when their server goes down. They don't offer you any kind of guarantees to be running. It could be down for days at a time because they're just offering this kind of as a goodwill service. And thirdly, there's no privacy assurances because this public server, although the software itself is secure, this is just a public server and uh, there's no guarantee that they are uh, offering about uh, the privacy of you connecting through their server. So that's why we're talking about using our own server, our own Rust Desk server on our own cloud instance. Okay, so here's our demo setup. Basically, I've got a machine here on the LAN. I've got a machine that's not connected to the LAN and it's somewhere on the internet. And I've got a Rust Desk server somewhere on the internet. So this is going to be a client desktop, which I'm going to call the outside one, which is going to be running Windows 11 in our setup. I've got a Rust desk server, which is a cloud instance. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And I've got a remote desktop, the inside one, a Ubuntu machine that I want to connect to. So ultimately, I want to be able to connect to this Ubuntu machine from the Windows machine. One is on my home network. One is outside my home network via this Rust desk server. And ultimately, you can have multiple machines uh, inside your network that you want to connect to. You just configure them all to use this Rust desk server. And we're going to the details of that now. So you need a cloud instance. So what you need is a very small uh, Linux cloud server, a VPS cloud instance. 
small one, one CPU, one gig of RAM, 10 gigabytes of disk is all you need. That's plenty to run the Rust Desk server. You can get them for five dollars a month. They'll run permanently so that anytime you want to access those machines, that server is sitting there waiting to accept the connections. You might be able to get them for four dollars, four dollars fifty, but five dollars is kind of your ballpark figure. Because it runs permanently, you're looking at about $60 a year to have this up and running so that you can access this at any time. So I've gone ahead, I've got one from Linode. I'm not associated with them in any way, but it's just the service that I use when I want to run up quick uh, cloud instances or quick private uh, servers. Uh, and so that's what I'll be using. Okay, so here I am on my cloud instance. If we just run HTOP here, we can see there's just got one CPU core. It's only got uh, a gig of memory. And if we do a DF minus H, we can see it's got 25 gigs of hard uh, disk. So a very, very small cloud instance, as I said, $5 a month. Uh, not very expensive at all. Now we need to run some commands. So the first thing we'll do is run some commands to enable the firewall on this machine, because obviously this is going to be out there in the on the internet. It's open to the whole world to get to if they know the IP address, uh, which wouldn't be hard when people are doing scanning for these kind of things. So we want to enable the firewall and allow secure shell to move through the firewall. Okay, so these are the commands for doing that, basically allowing it. Uh, do you want to proceed? Yes, we do. So they go firewall is active uh, and you can see that port 22 is open there, which is the secure shell. So I'm still connected because I didn't block that, which is really helpful. Okay, so the next thing we do is allow different port ranges for Rust desk to work. All these ports are described during the documentation. These commands are available uh, pretty much anywhere if you need to cut and paste them. So what we can do is we're going to allow the different ranges for the uh, Rust S firewall and at the end we're going to ask the firewall for its current status to make sure it all happened okay. Okay, so let's run those commands. As you can see, rule added, rule added, it added all those rules and then here it gave us the status here showing us all those ports that we've opened and these are the ports specifically for Rust Desk. Then the final step is we need to install the Rust Desk server itself on this cloud instance. You can do it by hand, but there is this handy uh, install script here. So what we do is we're going to fetch that from GitHub. Uh, you can go and look at it. We're going to change it so it's executable and then we're going to run it. So we'll start by running wget. Okay, that's fetch the uh, install script. We'll change it so that it is executable. And then finally, we just want to run it. That goes ahead and does various things like including uh, an apt update and, and so on so that everything is uh, fresh, ready to go. And then it will just get the relevant stuff that we need. Now, one question you'll get asked during the install is whether you want to use just the IP address or whether you have a domain name. Now, I don't have a domain name for this machine of mine. So I'm going to go straight with the IP address. So we just hit one for the IP address. Now there is an option to download and install a HTTP server. I'm not gonna do that. I just want the Rust Desk server running on its own. So I'm gonna say no. Now at this point, it's given me this address, 139.162 and so on. Don't worry, these will all be deactivated before this video goes live. And then this public key. Now you need to save both of these bits of information because we're gonna to need to type them into the Rust client. What they basically are is this is the server that this cloud instance where the Rust desk server is running. And this is the public key, basically this is the password. It uses public key cryptography. But basically without this and this, you can't connect to the Rust server. And even if you have this, You've got to have this, and this is obviously uh, a public key. It's not just, you know, a five letter password or something. So basically, unless you've got those two, you're not gonna be able to connect to it. And so it's protected from anybody else connecting to your Rust server, but you've got those two. Keep them secret, keep them safe, and then everything will be good. So I've saved the IP address and the public key. They're different than the ones I just showed you because I've been running up various instances while I've been doing my testing and setting up for this video, but basically still the same thing, an IP address and then that long set of digits which are the public key. I'm gonna use these ones to set up the rest of the environment. Now to set up the um, Rust Desk client on the outside machine, I need to install the Rust Desk client and I need to set that IP address and key that we have saved. Okay, so here I am now on the outside machine, the Windows 11 machine. I've opened up rustdesk.com inside the web browser. 
just going to hit the download button here. That's going to show me all the different types of downloads that are available. I want something simple, Windows, EXE. Let's just download that. Okay, there's the download. Double click to run it. Okay, so I want to go to the settings. So I click on network. I want to click on the ID relay server. And now I need to type in those numbers that I saved earlier on, the IP address and the key. So we put in the IP address for both servers there, ID server and relay server. And then we need to get that long uh, random string. It appears to be a random string. That's the key that I need. Click on OK. It says success. We go back here to home. Now down here, it just says ready. It used to have other text there. Now it just says ready, meaning I'm connected to my server. Now it says here, due to the authentication control, Rust S will not, may not work properly uh, on the remote side. Now this is the remote side. I'm using this as the client to connect in. You could click on install to use that. Uh, it's up to you. Now on the inside machine, I also need the Rust Desk client. I need to set up the IP address and the key. I also need to set a permanent password so that I can access this without having to know that constantly changing unique password. And because it's connecting to Ubuntu, I'll quickly go over again that Wayland uh, workaround for the current version of Rust Desk and for Ubuntu. I covered that in the last video as well. Okay, here I am now on the Linux machine. So this is the inside machine, the machine on my inside my home on my network. So I want to download um, what my, I'm on Ubuntu 64 bits. So we'll just download the .deb file. Now, two ways to install it. One way is I can go here to the command line and I can go into the download directory and then do the Debian package manager minus I and then that Rust file desk that we had, or if we go into the file manager, uh, you can go into the download directory again the same, and right hand click and go open with, and then app center. So that's the install. If you use file roller, it will basically treat it as a compressed file and try to have a look at the contents of it, which is an interesting thing in itself, but it doesn't help you install it. But here you can just click install and it will go away and install that for you. I need to type in my password and there we go that started installing okay first thing to do go over to the network again unlock the settings type in the password go to the id server now we need to type in those same numbers so 172 okay and then we need to put in the key in there so again what was shown on the server the same ip address Click on OK, successful, go back to home, and we can see now the little green lights on, ready. The other thing we want to do is to go into here again, unlock the settings. So we want to make sure we can set a permanent password so that we can always access this uh, with a known password without it changing on us every uh, time. OK, and that's it, and then we're done. And the other things we need to note down this number. So we need to write down this number, nine digits, because when you want to connect to this machine, you're going to need to know that, uh, particularly the first time, because other times it kind of remembers where you've connected to. But right now, write that down on a piece of paper, because we'll need it. Okay, one other thing to do is to solve this thing here about Wayland. I did show this in the previous video. Let's just click help here. It tells us all about it. Look, it tells us we need to set Wayland is equal to false in a particular file in fact it's etc slash gdmcustom.conf so let's just go into a terminal here and what we're going to do is we're going to go to we're going to say sudo nano slash etc slash gdm3 and then custom.conf type in the password there and we just there it is that Wayland is equal to false. So we need to set that to be false, then save and reboot. OK, so here I am back on my outside PC. This is the one that I want to use to connect to the Linux machine in my home office. And we need that number we noted down earlier. You only probably need this once. After that, it gets remembered in kind of the favorites uh, that you've been kept to or the recent things. Three, eight, two, three, seven, five. What I noted down, connect. Now this will ask us to type in that permanent password that we set. So I type in that, I could even click remember. Okay, and now here I am. Uh, this is the login screen for Ubuntu, but of course here I am on, on Windows. Now it's a bit bigger, so let's 
make the screen a bit bigger here. There we go, look at that. So click on that, type in my password, and there you go. I'm now connected to that machine inside of my network. Um, and that's it, I've got, I've got full access to it. So, you know, I can just start using the machine uh, however, however I want. And so now I'm outside my home office on the other side of my firewall. I'm connecting via the uh, Rustest server, which is enabling the two machines to talk to each other. And here I am now connecting and I haven't had to open any holes in my uh, firewall because it's handled by the Rust server. Uh, using, as I explained in that first video, this idea of hole punching. Basically, connections out are allowed on a firewall, so it connects out and then piggies back on the way back in. And there you go, it's working. Okay, so there you go, how you can access your desktop backup base over the internet using Rust Desk with a Rust Desk server running in a cloud instance. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a third variation. That's if you use Tailscale as a reverse VPN to VPN back in to your home office and then connect to the remote desktop. Do let me know if you'd like to see that video. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>